Falcher Falcher, August Kamani Jeev. Good evening and welcome everybody to live Irish myths with myself, Anton Owaraku, Anthony Murphy of Mythical Ireland. This is episode number 33, and today we're going to feature an introduction to uh, the myths and legends of place names. And this is going to be the first of a number of uh, episodes dealing with the theme of place names. Luganium Naka in Irish. Uh, Lug from place, L-O-G. Anyam from name. And the Nyaka at the end is for plural, place names. Now, I should point out that in relation to place names, there are probably distinct themes or areas that we'll be dealing with. First of all, there are myths and legends about how places got their names, but then there are separate myths and legends associated with places that are not necessarily immediately tied to the names of those places. So tonight we'll be kind of dabbling in both. Um, but by the time we... Uh, my apologies. Coda is making a terrible racket. <laughs> with his bowl. Um, by the time we get round to dealing with the Dinshanicus, which is an extensive collection of poems and prose from the medieval manuscripts dealing with place names, and Joyce's place names, and then separate little stories about places, we'll have done, I think, quite a lot of journeying into Irish mythology uh, and uh, folklore about place names. Anyway, good evening to those of you watching, a uh, few watching on YouTube. Uh, Erica Rivertree is in Louis, Louisville in Kentucky. Conosatatu Tome Goa. August Tosafain. Erica, I hope you're keeping well. Judith Nyland. <laughs> Hello, Judith. Judith is watching from Washington State. Could somebody let me know if the Facebook feed is okay? I'm, I'm not seeing very much. Uh, uh, surprisingly little, uh, actually, in terms of viewer numbers on Facebook, which would suggest there's an issue. Anyway, we'll carry on for the moment. Joy McD is in sunny San Diego, where it's been raining for a week. Great show. Glad I caught it live. Lovely to have you along, Joy. Ta fáilte rót anucht. Connor Puckle, Gigwit Anton, Tom Egg, Tnu Gomor Leshon episode shot. Well, I'm glad you're looking forward to the place names, uh, and I hope that it lives up to the billing. Yeah, uh, there's one person watching on Facebook, and that's Patricia McAteer in Omid. There's literally no one else watching on Facebook. What is going on? I may have to start the Facebook feed again. Uh, Jay McHugh says, hello all from Hoth, and Helene McGreevy is... Um, Thank you for teaching us phrases in Irish. Helene, I am relearning Irish. Hossi um, uh eg folum on Gaelga Arish on Shachtan Shilkache. I've started relearning Irish again in the past week. Uh, I forget a lot of it because I don't converse. So um, I'm going to do my best anyway. I think we'll restart the Facebook feed. YouTubers, I, I apologize for this. There seems to be something wrong with the Facebook feed. Is there? Oh, there's a few more coming in now. Ah, okay. All of a sudden. Facebookers, give us a thumbs up if everything's okay on the feed. Are you seeing and hearing everything? It used to be YouTube gave us all the trouble with the live feeds. For the past couple of nights, it's been Facebook. Egghead says, ah, I know what's wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm on the wrong channel. That's what's wrong. Uh, pardon me, YouTubers. It turns out I was actually broadcasting on the wrong page. <laughs> <laughs> ah, live TV, you can't beat it this time. Give me one second while I type in the name of the, uh, the episode. How embarrassing. Oh, well. This is how it goes. Tough. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that, folks. Really apologize for that silly carry-on. 
And let's go. And good evening, Facebook. We apologize for the technical difficulties. Uh, the YouTubers have been watching for a few minutes and uh, the introduction. So we're going to have to do the introduction all over again. Gomani uh, Giyayev, you're all very welcome. Anukt, uh, Ismisha Anton, I'm Anthony uh, from Mythical Ireland. This is Live Irish Myths episode number 33. And tonight we are going to have an introduction to place name, uh, mythology and folklore. And I was just saying how uh, the, um, the place names uh, we're going to have sort of two separate threads where one is about how places actually got their names, the myths and the legends behind the names of the places. But the second aspect then is myths and legends associated with that place, but not necessarily with the place name. Anyway, it's lovely to have you along. What happened was that I was actually broadcasting on the wrong page. I was broadcasting on another page, my photography page, and no one was watching. <laughs> So we got it sorted. I'm sorry about that. I was talking for about four minutes before I realized what was going on. Over on YouTube, uh, let's just catch up on things. Egghead is in Georgia. First time joining the stream. You're very welcome along. You might tell us your real name as well. I always like to have the real names. Ronald McFadden is in Los Angeles. Coda is in the kitchen making himself heard. Hello, Ronald. You're very welcome. Megan Walters is in Mississippi. I'm learning a little Irish from a free app, lol. Megan, it's fantastic. And that's all you need to do, a little at a time. And we'll all get there. And eventually, we'll be able to do totally bilingual uh, lessons. Martin O'Brien is in Mayo. Uh, all ears. Oh, sorry. No, he's not. Mayo Marty. Uh, all ears in Pickering, Ontario. Tófodja Road. Anucht Martin. And I say Anucht, but the sun hasn't just gone down here yet. Uh, so it's still day daylight. Auto Gypsy plus one on the Little Irish Lessons from Kevin Anderson in Indiana, USA. Hello, Kevin. Quivim. Greetings from Paula in Pasadena in California. Good luck with the Facebook feed. Thanks, Paula. And we seem to have got it sorted. There are 56 people watching on Facebook now. <laughs> <sighs> My husband is on Zoom now, taking his intermediate Irish class while I break, bake in the kitchen, says McHugh J. Brilliant stuff. Delighted. Good stuff. Okay. Uh, let's have a look. Hello, Facebooker, says McHugh J. Heard a shot, says, good evening, Anthony. Good evening, everyone. Looking forward to the show. Thank you for this. So enjoyable. Well, it's enjoyable for me, too. Hello from a sunny Isle of Mull. That's at Mandy McCurl. Hello, Mandy. If I shout out the window at you, you might hear me across the water. Uh, Paul from Hill of Tara says it's got cold. It was cold today, Paul, wasn't it? And Egghead said Nolan's the name. Thanks for asking. You're very welcome, Nolan. And Barbara King, Barbara Kling says hello from Vermont. Trying the YouTube feed today. Well, I hope that works out well, Barbara. You're very welcome along. Very quickly, I'll, I'll scoot across to Facebook where it's all happening. Henry Paddy Shearman is watching. Hello, Henry. Patricia McAteer is watching. Uh, still here on the right channel this time. I'm sorry, Patricia. You were the only one <laughs> popping up on the other one. Desiree Riley, glad we got it figured out. Yes, my stupid mistake. Barbara Barney says, hi, Anthony. Hello, Barbara. Alex Casterton, hello, Anthony. We're here. Brilliant stuff. Catherine Wall McManus. Hi, Anthony and Tua. Good evening to you, Catherine, and everyone else. Uh, Desiree, I'm excited about the episode. I find it very interesting. I hope so. Rowan Grove, hello from snowy Colorado. I've just been typing up some family recipes to email to friends. That's very kind of you, Rowan. Hopefully they'll enjoy the food. Richard O'Neill says, good evening, Anthony. Tronona what, Richard? You're very welcome along, Nick. Looking forward to this as well. Nick Eska Casterton, hello, Nick. Richard O'Neill, Eve Talbot Roses, calling in one of his friends, Jamie McCarville. Just finished catching up on the boyhood deeds of Satanta. Good stuff, Jamie. And uh, that was last night's, wasn't it, Alex? Oh, dear, I've done that on my personal page when I should have done it, Mike. Yes, it, it, it's happened to me a couple of times before. And uh, I'm glad I realized it before uh, too much embarrassment and uh, red-facedness came upon me. Good evening from Gothenburg. Eva Anderson is, since we're not in total lockdown, I've had a nice 15-kilometer walk in nature today, so it would be a good rest to listen to you with a cup of tea. Hello, Eva. And I should say that we're not in complete lockdown. Uh, all our public amenities are closed, but we are allowed to walk within two kilometers of our houses, which is very, very welcome at this time. Maeve Fina Callahan. Hello, Anthony. No worries. Good evening, Maeve. Yeah, uh, I'll save the red face for later. Philip Marin is watching. Hello, Philip. Gina D. Petrea is watching. Gina, you're very welcome along. One of the locals, Josephine Meehan. Hi there. First time too. I'm an episode Episode four of the previous one so catching up aren't you lucky that you have to catch up on four minus 32 is 28 more episodes not including tonight of myth flicks as it's called by margaret ring josephine 
Ta Forja Roat. You're very welcome. Yvette Tillema, hi to it. Love these videos over on Patreon. Um, yes, uh, thank you, Yvette, for the prompt. Uh, just as usual to say thank you to all the Mythical Ireland patrons over on patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Mythical Ireland, where people have been enjoying the rewards of being a patron. And I'm going to paste that link in just for those of you who haven't seen it before to go over and have a look maybe when we're finished. Josephine Meehan is in Dunmangal. Good evening to Donegal, Josephine. I hope you're keeping well. Richard Moore is watching my very good friend and my co-author on Island of the Setting Sun. Richard, it's great to have you along. Hope you're safe and well. Alan Briette, hola, hola, Anthony. Good evening from Rhode Island, from the smallest state in the USA to the smallest county in Ireland. Hello, Alan. Brendan Kinch is in Spain. Good evening, all. Let's see how Anthony does with his Irish pronunciation tonight. I will probably butcher a few things, uh, Brendan. There is absolutely no doubt a, a Brendan. Barb Jordan is in Florida. Hello, Barb. Lovely to see you back. Laura Adoma Troy is in Blessington, I believe. I think Irish has an ancient beauty, a mythical charm, and a dignified sense of bravery. Very well said, Laura. Um, Karim Gogus is watching. Hello, Karim. Lovely to have you back again. L Liga Pavila is in Latvia. Very good evening to you, Liga. Very nice to have you along. Kristen Taggart is in Davis, California, where we're finally getting some sun. Well, we had a lovely sunny day, but it was quite cool and breezy. Michael Naylor, hello from a rainy New Jersey. That's Mike and Jeanette who are in Princeton, New Jersey. Ah, well, look, it, it helps the grass grow, Mike. Isn't that it? Freya is saying good evening and banakti to you, Anthony, and all the myth flixers. Hello, Freya. Welcome back again. Deborah Alland is in Wisconsin in the United States. Hello, Deborah. Lovely to have you in. Federica Guy is in Italy. Hi, Anthony. Hi, Tua. I studied a little bit of Gaelic many years ago, but I almost forget everything. Yeah, perhaps uh, separately there's a group that maybe will do online sort of um, chatting in Irish because it helps to converse in it to remember it, you know. It's one thing to learn the words, but to actually practice and to, to, to chat in it. Mariana Dunn, finally on Facebook. Good evening, Anthony and everyone. Hello, Mariana. Lovely to have you along this evening. Molly Michelle Kopeski. Hi, Anthony and Tua from Minnesota. I should be working, but this is far more interesting and fun. I hope you don't get into trouble for watching. Kelly Sewell is in Vermont. Hello, Kelly. Lovely to have you back. Matt Byrne is watching from Threchad Oha. You're very welcome along, Matt. Sue Turner. Hi again. Hello, Sue. Jessica Walter Woods. Hi from the Woods family. Are you in Monaster Boys? Mon Monaster Boys. You have to switch over to YouTube to see you on the big TV. Brilliant stuff. Hello, Jessica. Stephen Anderson is in County Down watching. Hello, Stephen. And Katrina on show a new show. Goich. Katrina. August. Um, I, I'll, uh, uh, I have to. Uh, uh, correspond with you separately, privately, uh, about my progress. Tara Moore says, hi. Lovely name, Tara. Lovely to have you along. Dave Russell, hi, Anthony. Looking forward to tonight. Hello, Dave. Welcome back again. Colin Mara is in Hagfield in County Mayo. Hello, Colin. Lovely to have some West Coasters in this evening. Karen Gogus says, I love Ireland. Best place to be, even in these days. By far, Karen. Couldn't agree with you more. Jennifer Wilson Gerber is in Dallas in Texas. Lovely to have you along, Jennifer. Declan Barron. Koska Honad Rich. And uh, same to yourself, uh, Declan. Uh, Easter greetings to one and all. Deb Cyphers Bryan is in Oregon in the USA. Hello, Deb. Lovely to have you along. Mary King is in Connecticut. Hi, Mary. Ellen Murphy Sloan is in, in also in Rhode Island. Uh, again, lovely to have you in this evening uh, around the fire. Pull up a stool, grab yourself a dram, and let's tell some stories. Pat Rowan is watching from Washington State. Hello, Pat, my good friend. Susan Bain Williams is in Illinois. Hello, Susan. Marcia Downs, Slauncher from New Hampshire, USA. August Slauncher, Tulsa Fain. Cindy Joyce is in Spring, Texas. Hello, Cindy. And uh, Pat Rowan says, Happy Monday to a Mythflix. And the same to you, Pat. Hope you're in good form. Pamela Walters is saying, Slauncher from the Netherlands. Hello again, Pamela. Lisa Kelly Slasinger, is it? Is in New Jersey. Uh, another New Jerseyan in this evening. Hello, Lisa Kelly. You're very welcome. Robin Seacrest is in North Carolina. Hello, Robin, very welcome. Demi Woe is saying that it's snowing in the Denver Boulder area of Colorado. Well, I was going to say, you know, you could make some Easter Easter eggs out of snow, perhaps a little bit late now. But uh, don't send it this way, please. Keep it there. <laughs> Evie Hanlon is in North Queensland. Hello, Evie. Very, very good day to you. Jennifer Foley says hello, everyone. Hello, Jennifer. 
Uh, Rowan is asking, um, Katrina, maybe you could have a look at Rowan Grove's uh, question there about Scottish Gaelic. Uh, Evie Hanlon is calling in Jacqueline Kennedy Art. Melanie Lynn, hello from stormy Connecticut. Power is flickering. Hopefully it will wait out, Irish myths. Fingers crossed, Melanie. Lovely to have you along. Adam McCormick, hi, sir. Hello, Adam. Uh, Duolingo, says Katrina. Uh, Jennifer Foley is in Michigan. Hello, Jennifer. The notification links to page not found might have something to do with bad jokes. Yes, I know my my jokes are terrible. Uh, Mary King says uh, hi to Melanie. Paul Nolan is uh, in beautiful Sunset Mayo. First time tuning in. Hello, Paul. It's very nice to have you along. Geoich. Steve Martinson is in Madison, Wisconsin. Hello, Steve. Cindy McCarthy-Smith is in the mountains of Wyoming. Cold and cloudy over there. Hello, Cindy. A little bit cool, but bright here as we head to sunset and the beginning of twilight. Thanks, Katrina. Thank you for answering that. Paul Gowron says, good evening, Anthony and company from Rathto, from Rathoth in County Meath. Javier Iglesias Ramos is in Galicia. Hello, Javier. You're lovely. Uh, you're lovely. It's lovely to have you along. Barbara Murphy is in Tucson, Arizona. <sighs> OK, and on YouTube. Um, uh, Brida says, greetings from Manchester, UK. Hello, Brida. You're very welcome along. Uh, you, can, you should organise a Zoom chat in Irish. Well, yes, uh, perhaps I wouldn't be the one to do so because my Irish is probably not good enough, but uh, a brilliant idea. Uh, William King, good afternoon from Arkansas. Hello, everybody. Hello, William. Helene McCreevy, I struggled with spelling in English. I couldn't imagine how to spell in Irish. Yeah, it's a problem for all of us. Uh, Daisy Peters, hi, Mythical Ireland. A very blessed evening to you from here in Rio de Janeiro is afternoon. It's the afternoon there. Daisy, you're very welcome along. And David Daly is waving on YouTube. Also, Machu A. Lingard is in Bundoran, Donegal, originally from Edinburgh, Scotland. Very welcome, Matthew. Hi to you. Karen Schloan. Karen Schoen is saying hello from Austria. Hello. Maria O'Flynn is in Cork. Hello, Maria. Wow. Alan Brayat, your jokes are, are amazing. It's the delivery that makes them. Yes. Well, just today I was uh, I was urging people during the lockdown to uh, to share pictures of their moustaches. After 30 days in lockdown, share pictures of your moustaches. And perhaps you could even ask your husbands to join in. I promise I won't do any more of that. So tonight we're going to, uh, yes, finally, 17 minutes in on YouTube, nearly 18 minutes in, we get to hear some some skeel, some stories. Uh, I'm going to start, and the reason you saw the, if you saw the graphic, <laughs> I hope that wasn't too bad, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, if you saw the graphic for today's uh, uh, live stream, uh, you you probably were wondering what the, what that uh, townscape was in. Well, that's the townscape of Drada. I wanted to begin by telling some names from my uh, stories of names uh, and uh, the places the places of my locality associated with Drada. Before we get talking then about legends and folklore surrounding place names, Lorna Evers Monaghan is in from Slane. Hello, uh, Lorna. Francis Smith is also in Slane, I believe. Hello, Francis. Brendan Kinch is in Cartagena in Murcia. Hello, Brendan. Hope you are well. Uh, Paulette LeBlanc is in from Canada. Hello, Paulette. Luis Miguel Almeida says, hello, my Irish friends. You're very, very welcome along. Judy McQueen is in sunny Oregon. Hello. Uh, McCarthy, not McCarthy. That is duly noted. Um, what did I want to say? Yes, uh, the, the theme of place names uh, was suggested by Catherine Wall McManus and Brendan Kinch, who are both watching. So thank you, folks, for suggesting the theme. And we'll roll on with it, I think. Ross O'Connor listening from a million miles away in Rush, and that's Rush, County Dublin. Uh, about 20 miles down the road. Always great listening to you. Thanks, Ross. I hope you have a nice evening. Fidel McKelly Howard. Hello from Norfolk, UK, but originally from Tubrod Oran, originally from Tipperary. Hello, Fidelma, and welcome along to Mythflix. Some names for the town of Drogheda. And I am reading tonight from my own book, Mythical Ireland, New Light on the Ancient Past. And I invite you when we are finished, not now, when we're finished tonight, um, and because uh, I know some of you will want to follow up, uh, 
I, 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 I received what I can tell you is by far the best review of any of my books ever written and compiled by anybody. Uh, and uh, the, the, uh, the writer of the, the, uh, the review said I could share it on my blog, which I happily did. Uh, and there's the link. It should come up as a comment on both YouTube and Facebook uh, and read it afterwards. Uh, I'm absolutely moved and th thrilled by it, just in case you want to know more about the book. My hometown is today called Drogheda. That's D-R-O-G-H-E-D-A. And uh, uh, a lot of people who, who haven't been to Drogheda before, uh, especially for people from, from foreign uh, uh you know, from across the way, from other countries, I tend to pronounce it Drogheda because they think the G should be pronounced. But in fact, the G is silent and it's pronounced Drogheda. But that wasn't always the case. We may find out more about that. The commonly accepted nomenclature of Drogheda says that it is derived from the Irish Drechid Oha, meaning bridge at the ford. Drechid being a bridge, D-R-O-I-C-H-E-A-D, and Oha, a father T H A or A father T H a Ford. I've always been curious about that, mainly because a Ford or crossing point is something that obviously predates a bridge, so that the name seems to refer to two distinct and different methods of crossing the river. Before bridges were built, rivers were crossed at shallow places called fords, or indeed at shallow places where the crossing was augmented by some sort of stone causeway built along the river bed. An ancient ford of the Boyne at Rosnery, several miles upstream of Drogheda, and that's very close to Kletchik, and Rosnery is where, of course, the Salmon of Knowledge was allegedly caught by Finnegus and eaten by Fionn McCool, is marked on early ordnance survey maps. It might have been one of the principal crossing places of the Boyne in prehistory and was possibly the place where the great northern road from Tara, from Tara, the Shlia Milurkra, passed through the Boyne Valley adjacent to the great monuments of Brunabonia. In Island of the Setting Sun, in search of Ireland's ancient astronomers, Richard Moore and I presented evidence that the name of the Boyne River might have been inspired by the Milky Way the great river of the sky, and that the Boyne might have been considered its earthly counterpart. So I have this pet theory, and it's only a theory without much foundation, that perhaps the old name of Drogheda does not mean bridge on the ford, but maybe something like the ford of the wheel, Drogheda being related to the word Droch, D-R-O-C-H, which means wheel. I've also seen it written somewhere, though I cannot recall the source, that suggested the word drochid stems from droch representing the wheel-shaped arches of a bridge. My theory is that the ford of the wheel is the crossing point of the earthly Milky Way, the River Boyne. Indeed, another great wheel of the sky, the zodiac, through which the sun, moon and planets journey through the sky, was recognised in early times by the Irish phrase royal drech, the circle or wheel of the stars. In prehistoric times, the area where Drogheda is situated today was likely known as Inverculpa, spelt different ways. That's uh, the primary spelling here is I-N-B-E-R and separate word Culpa, C-O-L-P-A, Inverculpa. There are a couple of different stories accounting for the origin of this name. One of these says that it is named after the shin bone or Kulpa, C-O-L-P-T-H-A, of the great monster, the Mata. Now, we've spoken about the, Ma the Mata in several episodes, and we will be returning to the Mata, and there will be a separate episode on the Mata, which was said to have been slain by the men of Aaron at a mysterious stone on Newgrange or Sheon Vru. Another story says the name is accounted for by the death of the Milesian brother Culpa during their battle with the Tuadadanum, who caused a fierce tempest to blow up as the Milesians attempted to land at the Boyne. Inver is an Irish word that means the meeting of the waters or a harbour or estuary. Of particular interest to my little investigation here, though, are a couple of names for Drogheda, which I had not previously encountered. Drogheda Oha and Inverculpa are well attested, but much less well known and equally interesting are some other names which were apparently given to the town or features in its vicinity in times long ago. In their recounting of a famous story called The Colloquy of the Old Men, 
Cross and Slover, and we've read from Cross and Slover uh, in several of the episodes, a Ancient Irish Tales. Cross and Slover refer to the separate journeys of Oshin, son of the celebrated Finn McCool, and Kalche, son of Crunchu Macronon. After visiting Finn's old nurse, Oshin and Kalche split up, one going north to seek Oshin's mother, who is one of the two of the the other moving southward toward Tara. And here is a quote from said story. Oshin went to the fairy mound, fairy mound of Ochklechi, where was his mother, Blay, daughter of Jerag Gianskohok, while Kalche took his way to Inber Bik Lunchi, which at present is called Monaster Drechid Oha, the Monastery of Drogheda. From Beg Lugshek, that's B E G, separate word L O I G S E C H, Beg Lugshek, son of Arist, that was drowned in it. That is, the king of the Romans' son, who came to invade Ireland. But a tidal wave drowned him there in, in, his, in his Inver, or Inver, river mouth. He went on to Lynn Feach, Feach's pool, on the bright streaming Boyne, southwards over Old Magbreg, and to the Rath, or the stronghold of Drumdarug, where Patrick MacCulpurn was. And I should say that Lynn Fake or Fake's Pool is the exact location where, according to folklore, the Salmon of Knowledge was caught. And, and that is allegedly located uh, at Rosnery. There are a few things that are interesting in this passage. We know that Fake's Pool is likely situated on the bend of the Boyne be beneath Rosnery and was the celebrated place where Finnicus caught the Salmon of Knowledge from which Finn gained all his wisdom. The Inber Bic Lungshi, which was better known as the Monastery of Drogheda, is a curious one indeed. Bic or Beg is probably the Irish word Bug, meaning small or little. Lungshi could be a variant of L-O-I-N-G-E-A-S-A-C-H, meaning abounding in ships or in fleets. Joseph Falaki Negi asserts that the Monastery Drichid Aha, referred to in the text, is Melifont, the first Cistercian monastery founded in Ireland in the year 1142. And of course, we've mentioned Melifont uh, and the Cistercians uh, on numerous occasions as tho those people who gave Newgrange its name, because it was not called Newgrange until the arrival of the Cistercians. It was called Sheon Vru or Sheedenbroga or She Machanog. However, the location of Melifont, a number of miles northwest of Drogheda, on a smaller tributary of the Boyne called the River Matok, means it is some distance removed from the river mouth where Beg Lungshuk was apparently drowned. The story of the mysterious drowning of Beg Lugshuk is interesting indeed, and there are two separate spellings. Inber Beg Lungshuk has an N in it, but Beg Lug shock doesn't. It has L O I G, not L O I N G, and I'm not sure why that is. The story of the mysterious drowning of Big Lug shock is interesting indeed. There are obvious parallels here between Imber Big Lungshi and Imber Inver Culpa. Big Lug shock was the son of the King of the Romans who quote came to invade Ireland unquote, but a tidal wave drowned him at the river mouth. Culpa was the son of Mil, the King of Spain. And he was drowned somewhere near the mouth of the Boyne by a storm whipped up by the Daedanans while trying to land for the purpose of taking Ireland from them. The Milesians could also have said to be, quote, abounding in ships, unquote. Many of them were destroyed in the Daedanan tempest. The parallels between these stories are so striking that one cannot but draw the tentative impression that they are two versions of a single old mythic narrative involving the naming of the Boyne estuary. Typo, the letter left out. I don't think it's a typo, Katrina. Um, I must go back to the sources. I think uh, I'm finding that because I did investigate this when I was writing the book uh, and I was careful to make sure to repeat everything uh, exactly as it was. Uh, could, But it's, it's possible. It is still possible. It's not a typo on my part is what I'm saying. Another obscure ancient name from Drogheda is mentioned all too briefly in, in O'Donovan's Ordnance Survey Letters. And it would be interesting to see if further research into this name and its variants yields information of interest. Here is what O'Donovan says after writing briefly about the name Drochit Aha. There are, <coughs> pardon me. There are other ancient names of it still retain, retained by some persons. 
And of course, O'Donovan would have been writing in the first part of the 19th century, the, the first part of the 1800s. Sarsfield, whom we have mentioned on our former letters, says the ancient name of it was A Gunruya. And I'm going to type that in. Katrina uh, will, will, will help uh, break that down. D H U N R U A I D H E. A Gunruya. And I'll type that in also. I'll paste that in onto YouTube so the YouTubers can see it. And Jones says the ancient name of it was Dun Dovruya, which is yeah, another one altogether. Oh, bear with me for a second. Dun D U B H, which is black or dark. D D U B H or U A I D H E. Dun Dovruya. Okay, hopefully you, you you on Facebook and on YouTube you'll you'll no no I'm after copying the same one in again on YouTube. Ignore that. I'll paste it in as Dun Dovruya. Apologies for that. So there are the two variants. Others say it was called Treda, T R E D A, prior to it having got the denominations of the d d denomination of Drahada. If it was so called, Treda seems to have been the first anglicized name of it. Drikad Oha occurs in several places in the annals of the four masters. Literally translated, O Dun Ruya would mean the Ford of the Red Fort or something similar, and Don Dovruya would mean the fort of black red or dark red. And I'm just going to see if Katrina agrees with that. The dove is black or dark. A ford, dun fort, rua brown red. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Katrina. Margaret Ring just arrived. Whoops, late. Hi, everyone. Hi, Margaret. Don't worry. Not to worry. Um, you can catch up on the on the beginning. Uh, we were a little bit late starting on Facebook because of a stupid mistake by me, but that was very funny. Um O'Donovan puts a footnote in for the Sarsfield and Jones references, which asks the question, quote, are these names preserved in any document? Qu unquote. Regrettably, the answer would appear to be no. In fact, the names are so obscure that it's doubtful that most residents of Drogheda today would ever have heard of them. And that is, oh, oh, gun, it's Dunruya or oh, Gunruya and Dun Dovruya, which seem to be similar in their appellations. Donal Eg Eshtak in Guidor, Egundi Dunagal. Hello, Donal in Guidor in Donegal. My who? Ian Tuck Swimmule. Yes, and I don't know what that last word means, but um, it's lovely to have you along, Donal. Uh, and now we're going to go to, uh, in the first part of the library tour, I introduced you to uh, Irish Names of Places in Three Volumes uh, by. Uh, P.W. Joyce. And this is from volume one. And let me just check if I can find the date of when this was published. He, hopefully he signs the preface. Yes, 1869. So this is a 19th century work. So we're going to start the chapter Legends. And this is about place name legends. Are we, are we up to date, everybody, on, on Facebook? Just let me just catch uh, a breath for a minute to have a look to see if I've missed anyone. Prosh Ruchon, dealt with by Brian Friel in the wonderful play translations. Douglas Hyde was right. We need to de-anglicize to recover our meaning and identity. Paul Garron says, Drahada GH equals silent G like Garron. <laughs> exactly, Paul. Yeah. That link is okay now, says Matt. No problem. Aha of a Ford. Uh, Trisha Dart is in California. Hello, Trisha. Nice to have you along. Uh, just making sure that no one else is saying hello that I've missed. Inverness, mouth of the River Ness. Yeah, there's a similarity there. Beg Linchuk, son of Arist. Dave Russell, I was thinking exactly the same thing. Sai B says, good evening. Hello, Sai. Nice to have you along. I like Ah Tonroya, Anam Jas, Rua Abu. Yeah, and it's it's a crazy thing that there are these names that were given to, like Drahada. Um, uh, so I, I have a very good friend locally who's a historian, Brendan Matthews, and, and, and Brendan has, has been doing a tremendous amount of research over the years. And he has found references uh, from the 20th century where people actually pointed out the location of the ford and the location of the bridge. Uh, so my pet theory might be blown out of the water. I'm sure that wouldn't be surprising. I'm sure, it's only a theory. But you know, that Drahada was so-called because it was the bridge at the ford. And, and he specifically recalls somebody pointing out the location of the bridge 
you know, on Dreyfus August on Ah, uh, and the bridge on the Ford were two separate and distinct things, but they were located exactly close together. The bridge in question, by the way, St Mary's Bridge in Drada, which up until about uh, the late seventies or the early eighties was a, a lovely old stone bridge, which was removed uh, for the creation of a wider concrete bridge, uh, which caused a lot of uh, upset and angst at the time. Um, uh, but anyway, the. The, the memory of the, the folk memory was that the Ford was in a slightly slightly downstream, like maybe only 20 metres downstream, 20 yards downstream of the bridge. The bridge at the Ford. But um, uh, I must return to conversation with Brendan about those old names, Oh, Dunruya and Dun Dovruya, um, which, which may predate the medieval uh, name of Drechidoha. You know, Margaret Ring, Bru Nagesa, Bru as in Brunabonia. Interesting, yeah, absolutely. Adele Perth, hello everyone. Lots of people here today. Yes, indeed, Adele, and it's great to have you in from Melbourne, Adelaide, Adelaide, isn't it? Uh, lovely to see some Australians watching. Dawn Hilton, hi, Anthony, loving this. Hi, Dawn, you're very welcome. Um. A simul equals interesting. Ian Tuck simul, wonderfully interesting. Thanks, Katrina. Thank you for your help. Many of the legends with which the early history of our country abounds are no doubt purely fabulous. The inventions of the old Shanachies are storytellers. Great numbers, on the other hand, are obviously founded on historical events. But they've been so distorted and exaggerated by successive generations of romancers, so interwoven with strange or supernatural circumstances, or so far removed from their true date into the regions of antiquity, that they have in many cases quite lost the look of probability. It is impossible to draw an exact line of demarcation between what is partly real and what is wholly fictitious. But some of these shadowy relations possess certain marks and are corroborated by independent circumstances which render it extremely probable that they have a foundation in truth. It must be carefully borne in mind that the correctness of the interpretations given in this chapter is not at all affected by the truth or falsehood of the legends connected with the names. It is related in the Dinshanicus that Conal Kernock, one of the most renowned of the Red Branch Knights of Ulster in the first century, lived in his old age at Crochen, the royal palace of Maeve, Queen of Connacht. And of course, that's Rath Crochen. Oloil Moor, Maeve's husband, was slain by the old warrior with the cast of a javelin and the men of Connacht pursued and overtook him at a ford over a river in the present county of Cavan, where the village of Ballyconnell now stands. There they slew him, so that the place was ever after called Bail Ahachonel, Bela Connell, and this event is still remembered in the traditions of the neighbourhood. Isn't that fantastic stuff? So this is allegedly something that happened in the first century AD, being recalled 17 centuries later. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, Lisa O'Hare says hello again. Hi, Lisa. You're very welcome. And uh, Kathy, Ann, Kathy May Dayo is in Newcastle, Washington State, getting addicted to these sessions. Hope everyone had a wonderful Easter holiday. Well, Kathy, thank you. We all had uh, 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 a Costco uh, on a wa, uh, on show uh, on, on, on show here. <sighs> I'm trying, Katrina. I'm trying. Um but uh, I hope you all did also. Rath Kruachan. Yes, exactly. The reader may or may not believe this story. Nevertheless, the name signifies Connell's Ford mouth, and we find it always written in Irish authorities and pronounced at this day by the natives, Bel Aha Connell. And it is certain that it took its name from some man named Connell, whether it be Connell Kiernock or not. The accounts handed down to us of the early col col colonies belong to the class of historical legends. I have included some of them in the chapter on historical events and others I shall bring in here. But in this case, too, it is difficult and sometimes impossible to determine the line of separation. OK, let's carry on. The first lady who led a colony to Ireland, according to our bardic histories, was a woman named Kazair or Kassar. And uh, uh, those of you who are watching uh, will remember that we we had a, we had a, an episode about Kazair, who, according to tradition, was the granddaughter of Noah, he who built the Noah's Ark, and that she came to Ireland uh, at the time of the flood. And that was episode number 13. And if you want to, uh, those of you who are new to uh, Live Irish Myths, I will paste in a link 
uh, below as a comment uh, where you will be able to catch up on all of the previous episodes in one place. Uh, and that's just pasting in there now on Facebook and also on YouTube as a comment. So you'll see it underneath. Kazair, who came 40 days before the deluge with 50 young women and three men, Bith, or Bith, Laura, and Finton. That's Finton MacBochra. Kazair and the three men died soon after their arrival and gave names to four different places. Well, that's actually not correct because Finton survived. But anyway, but they are all now forgotten with one exception. Bith was buried on a mountain, which was called from him Shlieve Baha. It is well known and retains the very same name in Irish, but it is called in English Shlieve Ba, a range situated on the confines of Monaghan, Fermanagh and Tyrone. This cairn still exists, and it is a large and conspicuous monument on the top of a hill in the townland of Carnmore, to which it gives name, Parish of Clonas, Fermanagh. And it may be seen from the top of the moat of Clon Clonas, or Clones, Clonus, isn't it? A distance of about seven miles northwest. The first leader of a colony after the flood was Partholon, who, with his followers, ultimately took up his residence on the plain anciently called Shanva Alta Eder, uh, which means the old plain of the flocks of Eder, which stretched along the coast by Dublin from Tala to Eder, or Hoth, E D A R. Uh, and isn't that Ben Ed or e -E or E-D-A-I-R, uh, which is the old name for Hoth. The legend, which is given in several ancient authorities, relates that after the people of this colony had lived there for 300 years, they were destroyed by a plague, which in one week carried off 5,000 men and 4,000 women. And they were buried in a place called, from this circumstance, Talacht Muncher Partholon, the Talacht or plague grave of Partholon's people. This place, which lies about five miles from Dublin, still retains the name Tala or Talacht, uh, uh, modernised to Tala, T-A-L-L-A-G-H-T. -L now, Tala is, has been incorporated into Dublin now. It, it is not a separate entity because Dublin has grown quite a lot since uh, the 19th century. But that is where Tala in Dublin gets its name from, uh, the, gr the plague grave of Partholon's people. Just to mention that, and uh, uh, Kazair and Partholon are from Lower Gawala, the Book of Invasions or the Book of the Takings of Ireland. We are going to be doing episodes. We've done Kazair. We are going to be doing episodes on the other arrivals or invasions from Lower Gawala. So keep uh, tuned for that. And on the hill lying beyond the village, there is to be seen at this day a remarkable collection of ancient sepulchral tumuli in which cinerary urns are found in great numbers. So uh, what Joyce appears to be saying or admitting to is that uh, the place name appears to suggest that it is a mass grave, uh, but that archaeologically, in fact, there are a lot of tumuli there with cinerary urns in them. The word taliacht or tala a place, a, a plague monument, a place where people who died of an epidemic were buried, is pretty common as a local appellative in various parts of Ireland. Under different forms, it is of pagan origin, and so far as I know, is not applied to a Christian cemetery, except by adoption, like other pagan terms. In the, nor <coughs> pardon me, in the northern counties, it is generally made tamlacht and tamlat, T-A-M-L-A-T, while in other places it takes the form of Taulacht, T-A-W-L-A-G-H-T, uh, and variants of that, Taulacht, T-O-W-L-A-G-H-T, and Tulet, T-O-U-L-E-T-T. In combination with other words, the first T is often aspirated, which softens it down still more. Thus, Derry Haulot and Derry Haula in Fermanagh is the oak grove of the plague grave. Do Hamlet in Monaghan, and some of you may be familiar with these place names, and Do Hallet in Cavan, Black Grave. Mah Mahara Hamlet in Down is called on the Down survey M A G H E R E H O W L E T T, Mahara Hamlet. And in a patent of James I, Mahara Hamlet, both of which point to the Irish Mahara Hamlet which would be the field of the plague grave. Hope you're keeping up with this. 
and I hope that I'm not butchering the pronunciations, Katrina. <laughs> Katrina, sorry, you're 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 not uh, you're not under any obligation to correct me either. The Fomorians, a race of pirates, and again we will have a, a separate. Well, we've covered Kotmai Chura and the Fomorians in a previous episode. The Fomorians, a race of pirates who infested the coasts of Ireland and oppressed the inhabitants, are much celebrate are much celebrated in our histories. They came to Ireland in the time of Nemed, who led another colony 30 years after the destruction of Partholon's people. And their principal stronghold was Tory Island. Balor of the Great Blows was their chief, and two of the tower-like rocks on the east side of Tory are still called Balor's Castle and Balor's Prison. Frizun Balor and uh, Dun Valor. I've been to uh, Dune Valor, I've been to Tory Island, and it is a, a most extraordinary place. His wife, Kellen, that's Balor's wife, seems to have been worthy of her husband. She fought at the Second Battle of Moitura and inflicted a wound on the Dagda, the king of the Dedanans, of which he afterwards died. It is stated in the annals of Clon MacNoise that Ennis Killen received its name from her, and the Irish authorities in the Irish authorities, it is always Inish Kellen. That's I N I S C E T H L E N N, which means Kellen's Island. At this time, there lived on the mainland opposite Tory a chieftain named Mac Kinnealy, who was the owner of the Glass Goblin, a celebrated cow remembered in tradition all over Ireland. And uh, the same cow uh, was associated with the myth of Baltre, where the uh, the glass goblin was being carried or was being led down along the coast of Ireland with its magic calf uh, by Balor, uh, and uh, you can catch up on that on the Mythical Ireland website uh, under the ancient sites section where you can have a look at Baltre. Balor possessed himself of the glass by a stratagem and carried her off to Tory, and then Macanelli, acting on the directions of a fairy called Birog of the Mountain concerted a plan of revenge, which many years after led to the death of Balor. When Balor became aware of this, he landed with his band on the mainland coast and seized on Mac Keneally, and placing his head on a large white stone, he cut it clean off with one blow of his sword. Hence the place was called Cloch Chinfailia, which is the name used by the four masters, and other authorities, signifying Kinfela's or Kinnealy's stone. And the pronunciation is well preserved in the present name of the place, Clochinealy. The stone is still to be seen and is very carefully preserved. It is veined with red, which is the stain of Mac Kinnealy's blood that penetrated to its centre. And the tourist who is a lover of legend may indulge his taste among the people who will tell endless stories regarding this wonderful stone. From the same people, the giant's causeway has derived its name. It is called in Irish Clochan Navamori, or uh, anglicised to Clochan Navauri, O'Brien's Dictionary, uh, from Four and Clochan, or stepping stones or, or causeway of the Fomorians. And as those sea rovers were magnified into giants in popular legend, the name came to be translated as Giant's Causeway. So the Irish for Giant's Causeway is Clochan na Vomori, which basically means the stepping stones or the causeway of the Fomorians, not, in fact, the Giant's Causeway. The celebrities of the Dedanon colony have left their names on many localities. From the Princess Danon, some suppose they derive their name. And from her also, two remarkable mountains in Kerry were called Da Cich Danane, the two paps of Danon, now well known as the paps. One of the most celebrated characters among this people was Mananon MacLear, and we've had two episodes already about Mananon. If you want to look back, uh, you can have a look at those or listen to those uh, later, especially those of you who are just joining of whom we are told in Cormac's glossary and other ancient authorities that he was a famous merchant who resided in and gave name to Inish Manon, or the Isle of Man, that he was the best merchant in Western Europe, and, he, and that he used to know by explaining the heavens the length of time the fair and the foul weather would last. He was also called Orbson, and he was killed by Ullin, grandson of Nua, 
Nuad of the Silver Hand, that's Nuadu, who we've discussed briefly in other episodes, in a battle fought at Moy Cullen near Loch Corrib, in which the two chiefs contended for the sovereignty of Connacht. And when his grave was dug, it was then Loch Orbson burst out of the grave over the land, so that it is from him that Loch Orbson is named. And that's from the Yellow Book of Lecan, quoted by O. Curry. This lake is called Loch Orbson in all for in all our authorities, and this was changed to the present name Loch Corrib by omitting the final syllable and by the attraction of the sea sound from Loch to Orbson. Boat has it in the intermediate form Loch Corbis. Loch, Loch Orbson, Loch Corrib. Okay, so that's where Loch Corrib comes from. Many of the legendary heroes of the Milesian colony are also remembered in local names. And these are the different co colonizer, colonizers who are detailed in Lower Gawala in the Book of Invasions. And we will get back to that in numerous episodes. When the sons of Miletius came to invade Ireland, a storm was raised by the incantations of the Daedanans, which drove them from Inverskania or Kenmare Bay, where they had attempted to land, scattering their feast along the coast and drowned many of their chiefs and people. And of course, we've already uh, mentioned that uh, story in the, the Drogheda legends. Don, one of the brothers, and all of the crew of his ship were lost on a range of rocks off Kenmare Bay, afterwards called in memory of the chief Chach Doin, i.e. Don's house, which is the name used by the Irish-speaking peasantry at the present day. But they are called in English the bull, the cow and the calf. Culpa, the swordsman, another of the brothers, was drowned in attempting to land at the mouth of the Boyne. And again, we covered Inver Culpa earlier. And that part of the river was called from him Inver Culpa, Culpa from the Four Masters, Culpa's river mouth. This name is no longer applied to it, but the parish of Cope, C O L P, lying on its southern bank, retains the name with little change. Ever. E-I-M-H-E-R, son of Miletius, landed with his followers. Uh, and I think that's a variant of e e Ever or e Eber, E-B-E-R. And landed with his followers at Inverskania. And after three days, they fought a battle against a party of the Daedanans at Schlievmish near Trelli, where fell Skota, the wife of Miletius. And we have to do an episode about Skota, uh, suggested by Maureen O'Leary. And we will get to it. Don't worry, Maureen. The wife of Miletius and Foss, wife of Un. Foss was interred in a glen called from her Glan Fossy. It is now called Gleno Fosh, and it is situated at the base of Cahar Conry Mountain, about seven miles west of Tralee. The foremaster state that, quote, the grave of Skota is to be seen between Schlievmish and the sea, unquote. It is still well known by the name of Skota's grave and is situated by the Finglas stream. The glen is called Glen Scoheen, Scotin, Scotinas or Scotas Glen, and the monument, which was explored some years ago by a party of antiqu antiquaries, still remains. Are we okay? A decisive battle was afterwards fought at Talchen, or Telltown in me, than we have previously mentioned Telltown, in which the, actually it was mentioned in last night's episode uh, when Cuchulain was going to Mag Bregg from Owen Macha, and he, it said that he could see places like Chower, Tara, Chalchen, and he could see uh, Knogba, uh, Nauth, and he could see uh, uh, Sheed and Broga, Newgrange, in which the Dedanans were finally routed. In following up the pursuit, two distinguished Milesian chieftains were slain, namely Fuad and Cúlnge, the sons of Brogan, grandfather of Miletius. The former fell at Schlieve Fuad, uh, that's Fuad's mountain near Newtown, Newtown Hamilton in Armagh, which still retains the name of Schlieve Fuad. It is the highest of the Fuse range, F-E-W-S, but the two words, Fuad and Fuse, have no connection, the former being much the more ancient. The place where Cúlnge fell was called Schlieve Cúlnge, it is the mountainous peninsula lying between the bays of Dundalk and Carlingford, and the range of heights still bears the name of the Cooley Mountains. From Blaw, B-L-A-D-H, pronounced B-L-A-W, another of Brogan's sons was named Schlieve Blama, now called Schlieve Bloom. Whether this is the same person who is commemorated in 
Lickbla in Westmeath, I cannot tell, but the name signifies Bla's flagstone. For the four masters, write it Lig Blama, L I A G B L A D H M A. Glan Shkohim. Scotus Glen, or little, is that Scohim, uh, Katrina? Would that be like little Scota, would it? Feel, the wife of Louis, son of Ith, the uncle of Miletius, gave name to the river Feel, F E A L E, in Kerry. And legend says that her husband unexpectedly came in sight while she stood naked after bathing in the stream, and that she, not recognized him, immediately died through fear and shame. An abbey built in later ages on its banks was called in Irish Monastir na Failia, i.e. the Abbey of the River Feel, which is now called Abbey Feel and gives name to the town. Fascinating stuff. Legends about cows are very common. And of course, we are going to return to uh, creatures and animals in, play, in, in mythology. Our annals relate that Brassel Bodibad, son of Ruri, ascended the throne of Ireland in, in AM 5001. He, con he received his... I can't actually read that. It's too faded. Cognomen, it looks like. C-O-G-N-O-M-E-N. He received his cognomen because there was a great mortality of cows in his reign. Bo, a cow, and Giova, death. Uh, this is Bresal Bodibad of the uh, Douth legend. Uh, and we covered that uh, not too long ago. We discussed the legends of Nauth and Douth. And that was the mythology of Nauth and Douth was episode number 25. The annals of Clon McNoise mentioned this event in the following words. Quote, in his time, there was such a moran or a moraine or a disease of cows in this land as there were no more then left alive, but one bull and one heifer in the whole kingdom. Actually, the Dinshanix's version gives it as one bull and seven cows, which we suggested may have been a reference to Taurus, the bull constellation, and the Pleiades, the seven sisters. Uh, one bull and one heifer in the whole kingdom. Which bull and heifer lived at a place called Glan Sawaske? This glen, that's S-A-W-A-S-G-E, which I presume is an anglicization. This glen is situated in the county of Kerry in the parish of Temple No, northwest of Kenmere, and near the valley of Glen Carr. And it is still called Glan Sawashke, the valley of the heifer. S-A-M-H-A-I-S-C-E, Glan Sawashke. The tradition is well remembered in the county, and they tell many wonderful stories of this bull and heifer, from which they maintain the whole race of Irish cows is descended. There is a small lake in the island of Inish Boffin, off the coast of Connemara, in which there lives an enchanted white cow or bow fin. And this is all, absolutely, there's no doubt, this is all connected uh, all the way back to the Boyne River, Awin Bowfinna, and possibly the Milky Way uh, and the moon as well, which appears above the water at certain times. Hence, the lake is called Loch Bowfinna, the, the lake of the white cow, and it has given name to the island, Inish Boffin, the Inish Bowfinna, the, the island of the white cow. Bede calls the island Inish Bowfinde, F I N D E, and interprets it, quote, the island of the white cow. Unquote. Now, let me just check for a second that I'm up to speed with. Oh, we're getting, we're, we're, we're making good headway. And in fact, we'll finish there shortly because I want to continue that legends uh, from Joyce uh, as, a, as the next episode. I just wanted to make sure that I'm caught up with all the comments and questions. Uh, Drumlaheen says, people here used to be buried in Talacht Eve. Vaguely anglicized to Tulla Tullaho Begley. Oh, okay. Whereabouts is that? What county is that? I wish someone would make a series about the mythical history of Ireland better than Game of Thrones, says Megan Walters. Correct and right. I mean, on television, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not on YouTube, yeah. I thought Michael Fassbender wanted to make a movie about Cucullin, but it seems not. Okay, uh, let's have a look. Cognomen, an extra personal name given to an ancient Roman citizen, functioning rather like a nickname and typically passed down from father to son, a name or nickname. Thank you for, for that, Katrina. 
May I ask if there's myths associated with Athen Rye from the old song? There may be. And again, we have to get back to uh, individual places because we will be doing a lot more about place names uh, and more about specific place names. Teresa McGuinness says, Callaghan, Florida. Hello, all. Hello, Teresa. Good evening to you. OK, I think I'm caught up here. There is another Inish boffin in Loch Ree on the Shannon, which in Colgan's Life of St. Aidus is similarly translated. Another off the coast of Donegal, south of Tory Island. We also find several lakes in different parts of Ireland called Loch Boffin, the White Cow's Lake. Loch Bojarag of the Red Cow is a lake on the Shannon, south of Carrick on Shannon. Cora Boffin near Bally Bay in Monaghan, properly Caro Bofin. Caro, C-A-O-R-O-W-B-O-F-I-N, the quarterland of the white cow. Gort Bofina, Gort being a field, near Mallow in Cork. Drum, Drum Bofini, Drum a ridge in the parish of Desertser, D-E-S-E-R-T-S-E-R-G-E-S, -E -E same county. I have no idea how to pronounce that. I'll, I'll, I'll type it out, D-E-S-E-R-T. S E or G E S. It, it looks like desert surges. Wow, never heard of it. I'm learning something new here, too, folks. Lish Boffin in Fermanagh, in, sorry, in Fermanagh, Lish Boffin would be Lish as in a fort or a ring fort, uh, the fort of the white cow, and, and Armagh. Lish Boduff which means the fort of the black cow in Cavan, and many others. It is very probable that these names also are connected with legends. There are several places in Ireland whose names end with urcher, U-R-C-H-E-R, from the Irish word urcher, U-R-C-H-U-R, a throw, a cast, or a shot. Hang on a second, I'll just do a page count here. See what's left. Yeah, I'm going to finish on this page and we'll make another uh, equally long episode tomorrow of the rest of uh, this wonderful work from P.W. Joyce. In every such place, there is a legend of some remarkable cast of a weapon memorable for its prodigious length for killing some great hero, a wild animal or infernal serpent or for some other sufficient reason. For example, Urcher itself is the name of three townlands in Armagh, Cavan and Monaghan. And in the last mentioned county, in the parish of Curran, there is a place called Drumurker, the ridge of the cast. The most remarkable of these mighty casts is commemorated at the place now called Ardnurker in Westmeath, a cast that ultimately caused the death of Conor MacNessa, king of Ulster in the first century. That's Crohor, as we've mentioned him uh, in the Cuchulain stories. Brona Nas Oliver is saying hello from Derry. Hello, Brona. You're very, very welcome. The name Ard Nurture is a corruption, and the proper form would be Ach Nurture. The four masters, in accordance, in sorry, in recording the erection of the castle in eleven ninety two, whose ruins are still there, call it A an Urcher, and the natives still call it in Irish Balia A an Urcher, which they pronounce Blan Urcher, uh, which is the town of the ford of the throw or cast. Connell Kernock. On a certain occasion, slew in single combat a Leinster chieftain named Mescara, whose brains, according to the barbarous custom then prevalent, be mixed with lime and made of them a hard round ball, which he kept both as a weapon and a trophy. And of course, this is a, a, exactly akin to the weapon that uh, uh, Lou used to slay uh, his grandfather, uh, Balor in Cot Moitura in the second battle of Moitura and that weapon was called the Tathlum T-A-T-H-L-U-M which was made with uh, uh, the, the brains of his enemies hardened with lime there was at this time a war raging between Ulster and Connacht and Keth MacMagach, a Connacht chief having by stratagem obtained possession of the ball kept it always slung from his girdle for it had been prophesied that Mesgera would be revenged of the Ulstermen after his death, 
and Keth hoped that this prophecy would be fulfilled by means of the ball. Keth went one time with his band to plunder some of the Ulster territories and returning with a great spoil of cattle, he was pursued and overtaken by an army of Ulstermen under the command of Connor and a battle was fought between them. The Connacht chief contrived to separate the king from his party and watching his opportunity, he cast the ball at him from his tawal or sling and the ball struck the king on the head and lodged in his skull. His physician Fingian was brought and he declared that the king would die immediately if the ball were removed, but that if it were left so and provided the king be kept himself free from all inquietude, he would live. And his head was stitched up with a golden thread and he lived in the state in this state for seven years till the day of our Lord's crucifixion. When observing the unusual darkness, he sent for Bachrach, his druid, and asked him what it meant. Bachrach told him that the Son of God was on that day crucified by the Jews. That is a pity, said Crohor. Were I in his presence, I would slay those who are around my king, putting him to death. And with that, he rushed at a grove that stood near and began hewing it with his sword to show how he would deal with the Jews. And from the excessive fury which seized him, the ball started from his head and some of his brain gushed out. And in that way, he died. The place where Connor was wounded, or Crohor, was called Ah on Urchar, the ford of the cast, which Michael O'Cleary, in a flyleaf note in O'Cleary's calendar, identifies with Ah on Urchar, or Ardnurture, in Westmeath. And there we shall leave tonight's episode. But when I say we will leave tonight's reading, because we want to carry on tomorrow with more from the wonderful P.W. Joyce. I hope you enjoyed that and would be glad to... Uh, uh, would we'll be glad to know if there are any questions or comments. Gardens at Tiernanog uh, wants to know: Do you know or have an opinion if the name, if the surname Boggs comes from the fur bullock or those who worked in the bogs? B o double g s. I can perhaps help you for one moment with that because I have a couple of books about Irish surnames, as it happens. All Ireland surnames. Let me just uh, look that up for you for a moment. Bear with me for a second. Of course, the do 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 Apparently, it's it's apparently an English or Scottish uh, name, Boggs. And guide to Irish surnames will probably probably if it has it will probably give the same. Let's see, let's not jump the gun. No, it's not there. She's not in that one. Don't know if that helps. Boastful, haughty, a word of unknown origin, perhaps akin to Germanic. Bag and bug. Okay. Katrina has some information there. Steve Martinson, thank you so much for a lovely time here. You're very welcome, Steve. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Hempens, hemp, hemp and ash, asphalt. Whoa, what a death story for Crohor. Yeah, that's uh that's the story about how he died. He got so angered on hearing that our Lord was crucified that he hewed, he, he hacked at a, a a forest of trees, and in in anger, the uh, the uh, the ball uh, fell out of his head, and his brains came out with it. <laughs> funny stuff, uh, funny but not funny. Funny but kind of weird, you know. Richard O'Neill, thank you. Uh, one of the Inails, uh, Richard, descended from Nile, no doubt. You're very, very welcome. I hope you had a nice time. Barbara Murphy, another Murphy watching tonight. Thank you, Barbara says. Gushing blood, Jarag Red. Said to be called after the bow, Jarag, says Margaret Ring. Martin Hughes is watching. Hello, Martin. Um, I wonder if the Irish word for cast or throw is related to the word archer in English. That's how I heard it. That's how I heard it when you first said it. Archer, Archer. Very interesting, actually. Interesting suggestion. I think that in relation to some of the heroic casts, uh, that this is connected with the constellation Orion, which is seen to have his hand raised above his head and is controlling, as it were, or throwing the missiles uh, along the ecliptic. The missiles being the sun, the moon and the planets. Uh, and I wonder whether the moon, uh, the the concrete ball, the brains of the enemy hardened with lime, uh, 
uh, isn't perhaps a, a kenning or a poetic description of the moon. Alex Casterton says it was said Lou's spirit was alive and loved battle. It was only awakened when he needed to go to battle. It loved blood. Uh, thanks for that. Red Jarrog. And what make Jarrog mean? Yeah, pardon me. Jarrog. Jarrog or Jarrog. D-E-A-R-G in the modern Irish. Near the shore of Loch Ney, there are names Analushte, A-N-N-A-L-I-O-S-T-E, or Echidlushte, Derilushte, between the River Ban and Loch Ney on the shores of Loch Ney. Give me one second, Jim. I'll have a look. Uh, I'll have a brief look in the other, uh, I think, epi or episode. I think volume three um, of um, Joyce has has like a, uh, a, a glossary of place names. Uh Sorry, I'll put my glasses back on. Anna, Anna Lish, Lishte. Uh, Katrina, maybe you could help here too, um, if you don't mind. Anna. A-N-N-A-L-I-O-S-T-E. No, that's not here. Hmm. Anna is usually oh, na the ford of the, you know, oh, na something. Leash the, uh, <laughs> Why don't I use the, uh, yeah, mirror? Okay, that's not there. Um, yeah, that's an interesting one. Well, I'll have a look anyway. E C H I O D L I O S T E. Yeah, no, the first entry under E is is E D D R I M in Donegal. A lusty beg and lusty more. Yeah. Um, I've heard of Lusty, all right. And again, they're not listed either. Yeah, you've given you've given us an interesting one. Jim Conway's uh, looking for some more information. Uh, the fertility of the two locks, Lushte, L I O S T E. Um, That's an interesting one, Jim. I'll have to come back to that one. Amazing knowledge, says Lewis. Ireland is pure magic. Absolutely right. It is magical. And yes, I've gone as far. Eck was helping someone else. Okay, Katrina is looking for that. Uh, that's back up a bit, Katrina. Hang on now. Um, sorry, I double tapped the screen when I wasn't supposed to. It's back up. Oh, by about maybe 15 or 20 comments above Jim Conway. Near the shore of Loch Ney, there are names. Okay, I'll, I'll try and I'll try and I'll, I'll try and uh, put them out there. Uh, Matt Byrne is saying good night. Good night, Matt. Ihawa, and uh, thanks for dropping in. Uh, I'll try and type them. A N N A L I O S T E E C H I O D L I O S T E. Um, that's the two there. Anyway, I just put them in there again, Katrina. Anyway, sorry for the distraction, but this is all very interesting, and uh, hopefully um, before too long we'll get loads of meanings of place names. Bali Mina. Good night, Anthony, says Megan. Thanks for another lovely talk. Thanks for coming along, uh, Megan. Slán uh, go uh, and we'll see you hopefully tomorrow. Bali Mina. Balia. Uh, what is the name of Bali Mina? What is Mina. And there are lots and lots and lots and lots of valleys. Hmm, it's not listed. Bali Mini in Sligo. Bali e Mini, Omini or Omini or Mini's town. Um, somebody will know what Bali Mina is from. A.H. says, hello, Alana from North Wales here. Used, used to live in Craig Avon. Craig Avalon. <laughs> hello, Alana. <laughs> nice to see you. 
Nothing, Gamal Ashkel. No, no worries, Katrina. And sometimes it is just simply not possible uh, to find immediate answers. Uh, one has to kind of dig a little bit deeper with these things. Thanks, Lorna. Lorna is heading off. Uh, good, good night to everyone. It's been lovely as always. This has been Live Irish Mits. Uh, uh, this is episode 33. 33 uh, consecutive episodes during the current COVID lockdown. Stay safe, everybody. Keep washing your hands. Stay physically distant but not socially isolated uh, try to maintain contact with people we are very very blessed and lucky that we have technology to enable us to keep in touch with people the middle townland on Balia Menach says uh, Katrina so there you go for the person on D Lynn asking on YouTube Bali Mina apparently is from uh, on Balia Menach M E A father A N A sorry M E A father N-A-C-H, which means the middle townland. So there you go. Cindy McCarthy-Smith is giving the thumbs up. Good night, Cindy. May fina callan ihawa tua slauncha. August slauncha tosa fein, Maeve. Uh, Dawn Hilton says, thank you all. Thank you, Dawn. Uh, Dave, Dave Russell, Middletown, yes. Good evening, says Kelly. Thank you. You're very welcome. Karen Gogas, thank you, dear Anthony, and thanks, everyone. Stay safe, everyone, and we'll be back tomorrow night. And I think we actually might just continue with place names tomorrow night because it's been very interesting. And I'm actually remembering stuff that I'd read before and, of course, uh, catching up on it all again, uh, contained in this voluminous library of works behind me. And uh, don't forget to spread the word uh, to your family and friends. Get them to join in. And if you have any interest in old Irish stories or place names or myths or legends, uh, this is the place to come. Usually eight o'clock every evening, sometimes a little bit earlier. On a Friday, we tend to go at seven o'clock. Ikhawa Agus Kolosov says on Cree Arch. Uh, thank you, Katrina and uh, Ikhawa Tosafane. Thank you. Keep an eye on the night skies, planet alignments, says Helene McGreevy. Yes, I believe there's a nice alignment of planets in the next few mornings. The moon and uh, Jupiter and Saturn and Mars, uh, a four a four way alignment in the mornings. Uh, and of course, right out there right now is lovely uh, twilight. And I'm going out to get another picture of, of Venus, the evening star. Ian Tuch Ma Anthony, Shayan Audrey, and good night to you, Shayan, and lovely to have you along. I hoa agus slán go foil. Bye for now. Only for now. We'll see you all again tomorrow night. Go to Mila Mahagiv, go there. And thus ends the Facebook feed and shortly also YouTube. Thank you, YouTubers. It's been lovely having you along this evening. Hopefully we'll see you all again tomorrow Tomorrow night. I'm Anthony Murphy. This is Mythical Ireland, live Irish myths. Good night for now. Yee